Fairway Commission is now in session. Please be seated. This is item number C1 of 2024, <coughs> the annual wage review 2023-2024 for decision. Uh, we are announcing today the decision we have reached in this year's annual wage review. Uh, the annual wage review is conducted in accordance with section 285 of the Fair Work Act, uh, which requires the Fair Work Commission to undertake two tasks. The first task is to review and make the national minimum wage order. The only function of the national minimum wage is to set a minimum rate of pay for employees in the national industrial relations system who are not covered by a modern award or an enterprise agreement. Only a very small number of employees are actually paid the national minimum wage and will be affected by this decision. The second task is to review modern award minimum wages. This is the most important aspect of the review. There are 121 modern awards which apply to employees in the National Industrial Relations System in various industries and occupations. There is also a small number of modern enterprise awards which apply to specific business enterprises. Each modern award sets minimum wage rates for employees working in the industries, occupations or enterprises covered by the award. In setting modern award rates of pay, the Commission is required to take into account the amount of the national minimum wage. Approximately 20.7% of the Australian workforce, or about 2.6 million employees, are paid in accordance with minimum wage rates in modern awards. They and their employers are therefore directly affected by this decision. In addition, there are some categories of employees who are indirectly affected by way of the review outcomes being flowed on by various means. Our estimate is therefore that this decision will operate upon the wages of about one quarter of all Australian employees. The characteristics of employees who rely on modern award minimum wage rates and are therefore directly affected by our decision are significantly different to the workforce as a whole. They mostly work part-time hours, are predominantly women, and almost half are casual employees. They are also much more likely to be low paid. Because of these characteristics, the broader economic effect of annual wage review decisions is limited. The total wages cost of the modern award reliant workforce constitutes less than 11% of the national wage bill. Furthermore, the effect of the review decision across the economy is not uniform. About two thirds of all modern award reliant, reliant employees are employed in only four industry sectors. Other industry sectors have negligible numbers of modern award reliant employees. The Fair Work Act requires us to take into account specific considerations in conducting the annual wage review. These include relative living standards, the needs of the low paid, workforce participation, the performance and competitiveness of the national economy and the need to achieve gender equality. Uh, we have taken all of these considerations into account. In conducting the review, we have received submissions from a range of stakeholders including the Australian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the Australian Council of Trade Unions, the Australian Industry Group, the Council of Small Business Organisations Australia, as well as various other employer and employee organisations, and the Australian Government and State Governments. A number of parties have advanced specific proposals for wage adjustments to be made in the review, and these are set out in the appendix to our written decision. However, we make clear that the annual wage review process is not one of adjudication between competing proposals. Uh, while we have obviously taken the submissions made into account, uh, our statutory task is to make our own assessment uh, as to what constitutes a safety net of fair minimum wages. Our decision today is to increase the national minimum wage and all modern award minimum wage rates by 3.75% effective from 1 July 2024. 
In determining this level of increase, a primary consideration has been the cost of living pressures that modern award-reliant employees, particularly those who are low paid and live in low income households, continue to experience. This is notwithstanding that inflation is considerably lower than it was at the time of last year's review. Modern award minimum wages remain in real terms lower than they were five years ago, notwithstanding last year's increase of 5.75%. Employee households reliant on award wages are undergoing financial stress as a result. This has militated against this review resulting in any further reduction in real award wage rates. However, we also consider that it is not appropriate at this time to increase award wages by any amount significantly above the inflation rate. Uh, this is principally because labour productivity is no higher than it was four years ago and productivity growth has only recently returned to positive territory. We have taken into account that the labour market and business profit growth overall remain strong. However, the position is less positive in some of the industry sectors which contain a large proportion of modern award reliant employees. We have also taken into account that modern award reliant employees will shortly receive the benefit of the stage three tax cuts and the budget cost of living measures, which are projected to increase real household disposable incomes uh, over the next 12 months. We have treated the forthcoming increase to the superannuation guarantee contribution amount as a moderating factor. The increase of 3.75% which we have determined is broadly in line with forecast wages growth across the economy in 2024 and will only make a modest contribution to the total amount of wages growth uh, this year. We consider therefore that this increase is consistent with the forecast return of the inflation rate to below 3% in 2025. We have also determined to establish a program for the timely resolution of gender undervaluation issues arising in respect of certain modern awards. A gender equity research project, which was undertaken as a result of the decision in last year's review, has now been completed. This has permitted us to identify priority areas for attention. We have decided that modern awards and classifications applicable to early childhood education and care workers, disability home care workers and other social and community services workers, dental assistants, medical technicians, psychologists and other health professionals and pharmacists will be the subject of commission initiated proceedings to examine and address gender undervaluation. Uh, these proceedings will commence shortly after the issue of this decision and we intend that they will be completed by the time of next year's review which will then move on to the consideration of other gender undervaluation issues. We conclude by thanking all parties that participated uh, in the annual wage review process and we thank them for their contributions and we also thank the staff of the Commission uh, for their assistance. Uh, and we now adjourn. All stand. The Fair Commission is adjourned.